So this is my first video in the React Native series. I want to talk about how you can use JavaScript and specifically the React JavaScript framework to build mobile apps. React JavaScript is a great way, it's a great framework, it's a great way to build applications. And with React Native added on top of that, we can turn those JavaScript web apps into actual native applications. So let's talk about how you get started and how you can launch them on the simulator to test them out. So I've got a uh, the homepage here for React Native. This gives a sample. You can see uh, great documentation for React Native. Uh, there's a tool called Expo as well that we will be using here. Now you don't have to use Expo, but it's definitely a great way to sort of get set up initially, especially if this is the first time you've worked with React or React Native. Um, Expo really helps you get through that startup, get your project going, get things testing. Um, can't recommend it enough. So how do we use Expo and how do we use React Native? How do we build a mobile app project? So I'm going to jump over here to the command line. And one of the things that we have to do, first of all, is we have to install the program expo now this used to be called a thing used to be called create react native app so if you've ever worked with react you know you can do create react app to build your initial project well originally there was a create react native app now that's just been replaced with a thing called expo and specifically the expo cli the command line interface so let's install that first of all we're going to use either npm or yarn to install that. So we can say npm install globally and then expo CLI. This is the package that we want to add so we can do that. Or alternatively, you can use yarn. So that's one version of the command. The other one is yarn global add expo CLI. So you can use either one of those. Won't make a difference to what we're building. It'll go through. There we go. I've got the install finished and it installed two things for me, Expo and Expo CLI. Now that I have this installed, I can use the Expo command to create my project. So let's do that. So Expo init and then the name of the project, which is basically going to be the name of the folder. And I'm just going to call it my app. So Expo init my app that creates the folder. And it's going to ask us, do we want a blank one or do we want a project that's got tab navigation? I'm just going to go for the blank one. Just hit enter. It's going to create my project, create that folder. Then we're going to CD. We're going to change directory into that folder. And that's where we're going to do all of our work. And it tells us here, CD into that folder. And then you can do expo start to run this. I'm going to do CD my app. So I'm inside that folder. If I do an LS, can see that it created all this for us. We're going to talk about these files in just a minute. Expo start is going to start the development server. And here it is, localhost on port 19002. So this is the development server. I can now click on the links over here, run on this on an Android emulator, but you need to have your emulator running already. Same thing with the iOS simulator. You can run it there, but you need to have it running already. Now I've already launched these just to be ready for this. I have both my Android emulator and my simulator up here. I'll click on the iOS simulator one first of all. That's going to go and install on my simulator. It installed this program right here, the Expo Client. So if you have your own device and you're going to be testing on your own device, you're going to want to install. Go to the App Store, find Expo Client and you will want to install that. And this is installing here. You can see, you can watch the progress as it installs. This is the Expo client running our application. And one of the really cool things about this is because it's JavaScript, because it's web development, we're writing it in JavaScript. It's running this development server behind the scenes and it's constantly rebuilding. Every time we save a file, it recognizes the fact that we've saved it and it rebuilds the project and pushes it to the simulator again using the Expo client. Um, now this is the menu, the development menu. Command D if you're on uh, Mac. So I'll say OK. And this is my actual app. 
If I hit Command-D, it brings up this menu again. So you can ref force refresh it if you want. There we go. All right, so that's the simulator one. Now my Android device emulator, I'm going to click that one. So it's downloading the latest version of Expo. That's the client, and it's installing that on my emulator. So there it is. Now it's open opening that. Yes, I will permit that to work. Here it is. Sure, why not? Okay, and there we go, and it's doing its install now. I hit the back button. It's doing the install, and there we are. There's the app up and running. So we have it up and running in both the iOS simulator and the Android emulator. And there's the little icon up at the top that are showing us that Expo is running. Okay, so there's it up and running. Now, if I want to um, actually edit this inside my tools and edit the application, I'm going to turn off my development server here with control C. That's the command to stop the development server. And I'm just doing that because I want to uh, run this. You can open it in um, brackets, VS Code, Sublime, whatever you want, any, whatever IDE you're used to using, you can edit your project in that. And then I'm going to start Expo up again. So Expo start. And there we go. It's up and running again. Now this is going to Every time we save this, this should, here, I'm going to shut down my applications here. And make sure they're both, there we go, both are shut down. This is up and running again. I will relaunch it. I'll just do it in the iOS one just to, uh, save a bit of time. So this is going to be launching it again. There we go. It's launched. Now, here we have the app opened up in my IDE in brackets. Inside of here, we have a bunch of files that we start with. A couple of them I want to draw your attention to. Package.json, which is right inside the root. App.json, which is also inside the root. And app.js. These are the three files that we're going to start with. App.js this is your home screen. This is the first page in your app. And if you've done any React work, not React Native, but React, you will recognize this. We are creating a component. That is our page. It has a render method inside of it, which is returning an object here. Inside this object, this is the content for that first screen. Now, it looks a lot like HTML. It is JSX, but this is not HTML. This is specifically components that are part of the React Native library. And if you look at the imports up at the top here, you'll see I'm importing these three things from the React Native package. We have that now inside of here. If I wanted to add a button to this, well, there is a button component. So we can say, I want a button and the button gets not text, but title. And we can also set color. We can add an on press event like this. So I'll say this dot pressed. And up inside my component, I can create a function called pressed. And that will receive the event. And here's my function. We'll just console log pressed. So there's my function. I'm calling that from here. So when the press event happens to this button, it's going to run this piece of functionality. The title is going to be the text that you see on the button. So I'll say click me. And the color, well, anything that you would define normally as a color in web development. There we go. So there's my hex value. And we can space these out. This is just JavaScript, JSX. So there's the information about my button. I save this file again. And then if I jump back to my simulator, I have an error, yes, because I was, oh, right, cannot find the variable button. We have to import it because unlike JSX, when you're doing React, you don't just naturally have all the HTML elements available to you you have to bring it in from React Native. 
So this is the element right here button. This is the one that I want to use here. So I have to bring it in from React Native. And there we are. Here's my button with the click me event. I'm clicking and it is running that function in behind the scenes. And here's the console log. So in the terminal where we ran the expo start to start the development server, this is where you will see the console log messages coming up. Okay. So that's sort of basically how you get started, how the different pieces fit together. We have Expo, which is the tool that we use to create our project, run the development server, which when we run the development server, this is the screen that we get. We can launch the emulator and the simulator from here. And then on the emulator or the simulator or on the actual device that you've got connected that you're installing to, on those things, we have the Expo client that is the other piece of this puzzle. The Expo client is what allows the development server to pass things up to and refresh them inside of the device. The actual application here is being fed stuff from the Expo client. Okay, so I'm going to be making a whole bunch more videos about React Native. I hope that gives you enough to get started and start experimenting with this. If you have questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.